Hello, my name is Christy Slobogan, and I'll be walking you through a short explanation of how to approach visual and material objects within your journey of studying the history of medicine. This video expands upon Mary Fassell's video on reading a primary source, and it is best watched after her contribution to this toolbox series. Mary Fassell's video sets you up well for starting to analyze visual materials. She highlights the importance of asking who, what, where, when, how, and why when analyzing a primary source. The same applies to any visual primary source or any object. You need to determine who made the work, what the piece is and what it's made out of, where it was made, when it was made, how, and why. But there are a couple of other questions that need to be considered when you are looking at pieces of visual culture, material culture, or art. First of all, let me quickly clarify what I mean by visual or material culture. How do these differ from art? Art may seem easy to define as it is what we see in museums, paintings, sculptures, and the like. But art also qualifies as visual culture, which is a more expansive definition. Studying visual culture means studying images and their meanings situated in history and society. A piece of visual culture is any tangible or visual expressions of a culture or people. It is often more ephemeral or more fleeting than a piece of quote-unquote fine art, like the Thomas Eakins painting on the left here. So a piece of visual culture could be a cartoon sketched in a doctor's notebook or a public health poster, like the one in the middle of this slide. Material culture is a more expansive definition of visual culture, in which it does not have to be an image per se, but can be any object that is embedded with cultural meaning. So a hospital-branded pen in a waiting room, or the alms boxes posted at the front door of an 18th century asylum, or a jar holding a wet specimen of a body part in a medical museum. Here we can also see a prosthetic mask used by veterans of the First World War. All of these objects and images can be used to glean a better understanding of how medicine was practiced and how it was experienced in the past and how it is understood today. The question of who, of course, applies to the artist or craftsman who made the object, but visual material is often made for a patron or for a publisher, so you also need to ask for whom. This also, of course, relates to the why question. Oftentimes, an artwork is made by the artist of a certain person because that person depicted in the artwork has commissioned the artist to make the portrait. So the artist makes the piece in order to collect the fee that they'll be paid in exchange for making the portrait of the doctor, as in this painting of Edward Jenner. The economic element of the production obviously will have an impact on how the sitter in the portrait is portrayed and what messages make it into the final painted piece. As with many medical material, whether paintings or prints, it is also important to consider any text that surrounds the image or is within the image. And this can be either on the canvas or paper or on the frame, as these words will often give you clues as to who is depicted, when, by whom, and perhaps even why or on what occasion. We may look at an object and say, this is a painting, this is a drawing, or this is a print. But we also need to know the size of the objects, and art historians often include the dimensions of the artworks that they are studying and the descriptions or captions that they write, as you've seen in some of the captions here on this slide and in this slideshow. This is important because the size of the object helps us to understand how it was viewed and experienced. Was it overwhelming to look at this image? Did you have to step back to take in the whole picture? Or could you easily hold it in your hand? Was it so small that you had to squint at the details to make them out? For example, we're looking here at an obstetric pamphlet on the left with fold out paper fetuses that was relatively inexpensive and could be slipped into a midwife's pocket. But we're also looking on the right here at a massive atlas that would be purchased by practitioners as a status symbol and that could be used for teaching. The answers to these questions of size and how these objects were handled by the people in the period in which they were produced Determine how we as historians will look at and speak about these objects, about the people who used them, and about what their purpose was. Artworks are made. They can be painted, etched, sketched, or sculpted, among many other techniques. But medium is of utmost importance in visual culture studies. For example, take these illustrations of First World War facial wounds. One is a photograph, one is done in watercolor, one was drawn and then printed in a textbook, and one is done in pastel. They all depict similar injuries and in patients, but the medium means that our reactions now and reactions and uses in the past are and were different. 
The photograph has connotations of being real, of being something unedited. Although whether or not this is a true element of photography, we can leave to the historians and theorists of photography to debate. The watercolor would have had to be done on a table after the artist did a quick sketch of the patient, so it couldn't have been done what is called in situ. But once dried, it could easily be put into a patient's file. Not so for the pastel sketch, as pastel is a crumbly, fragile medium that would be ruined if it were brushed against by even another sheet of paper. This object holds a very different material status in the hospital and must be hung on a wall or framed, and obviously handled very carefully. The line drawing, on the other hand, can be printed in a book to be shown to many more people than just those at the hospital. Looking at the different purposes and uses of these media and why they would be used by the artist and by the doctors who commissioned these pieces is important for understanding the role of this visual culture within the medical milieu in which they were made. These short few slides are not an exhaustive list of what needs to be thought about when you're looking at medical images and objects. But hopefully these approaches can help you to think about all of the cultural and historical power and implications that a simple sketch or a medical textbook or a tool or container can have on our understanding of the long history of medicine. To summarize, who, what, where, when, why, and how are still vital questions to ask when looking at a piece of medical, visual, or material culture. But keep in mind to also consider, among other questions, for whom, how large, and what medium and technique. There are many, many books and articles that take this type of visual or formal analysis and apply it to the history of medicine. But I find this fairly short and accessible article by Kathleen Pierce a great way into understanding how failing to consider these questions and to truly apply visual analysis to a piece of medical visual culture can mean that images become untethered from their historical meaning and cultural significance. I hope you enjoyed this video, that you'll enjoy reading Kathleen Pierce's article, and that you'll now feel more confident using images and material culture in your writing on the history of medicine. Thank you.